wake up. It's the Sleep Unplugged podcast, episode 86, Sleep and Bedding, Lay Me Down in Sheets of Linen. Welcome everyone to the Sleep Unplugged podcast. My name is Chris Winter. I'm a neurologist, sleep specialist, and your host for this episode of the podcast about not the mattress that we sleep on or the pillow we sleep on, but the actual fabrics and bedding we put on our pillows and our mattresses that are against our skin and create the environment that we want when we sleep at night. So this will be a fun topic, I think, to talk about. If you'd like to talk about what you sleep on, what bedding uh, fabrics you think are the best, you can reach us at Dr. Chris Winter Twitter, Dr. Chris Winter Instagram, Dr. Chris Winter TikTok, Blue Skies Threads. We have a YouTube page where we post all the videos of our content. I have two books, The Sleep Unplu uh, the Sleep Solution, Why Your Sleep is Broken and How to Fix It, as well as The Rested Child, Why You're Tired, Wired, or Irritable Child May Have a Sleep Disorder and How to Help. So we usually get started with our show with comments, corrections, criticisms. Got an interesting viewer or listener message through our Instagram page. Again, that's Dr. Chris Winter from Cali. Callie wrote, hey, Dr. Winter, I was recently diagnosed with narcolepsy with cataplexy and have found your podcast in my pursuit of learning more about it. I just listened to episode 39 and noticed at the end you didn't dive too deep into Patolasan. Any particular reason? Looking forward to your reply. And what Callie is referring to is episode 39 we did of the podcast. It was narcolepsy treatments. I want a new drug. And that was the episode where we looked at all the available treatments for narcolepsy and just sort of talked about them. And you know, it's interesting. I remember listening back to that one and thinking, I, I really kind of cut Patolasan off a little bit. I, I was running a little long on time and just didn't want to make it an unwieldy episode. So I'm glad you wrote, Callie, because I do think that I shortchanged Patolasan a little bit. And Patolasan is the drug name. It is uh, known as Wakex in the United States. It's made by a company called Harmony Bioscience. And just as a disclaimer, I have done consulting and speaking for Harmony Bioscience. I've actually done consulting and speaking for most of the narcolepsy medications that are available now. So if there's a conflict of interest, it's a conflict of interest with everyone. So I'm not trying to sell you anything, Callie. I think all the medications we have available for narcolepsy are fantastic. And each patient brings to the table their own needs. And Patolasan or Wakex certainly suits a lot of patients' needs. So when you think about Patolasan, Patolasan works a little bit differently than the other medications that we've talked about for narcolepsy. It works through the chemical histamine. And histamine is the most alerting neurotransmitter in the brain. And Patolasan tends to block that. So it's um, blocking the, I'm sorry, it's enhancing, God, not enhancing, it's enhancing histamine to make you feel more awake. An antihistamine, which we've talked about before, can make you feel sleepy because it's, again, blocking that alerting neurotransmitter. So again, wake eggs, patolasan enhances that chemical in our brain and makes us feel more awake. Some unique features of wake eggs or patolasan, one, it is the only FDA-approved drug for narcolepsy that is not a controlled substance, which makes it a bit... Um, unique. It's the only one. Uh, number two, it's one of the few drugs for narcolepsy that in addition to helping with excessive daytime sleepiness, also is FDA approved to treat um, cataplexy. So Callie says, look, I've got narcolepsy with cataplexy. So this medication could potentially help both of your symptoms. It is a pill that you take in the morning. A uh, little fun fact, it was approved in Europe many, many years ago when it came to the United States. Um, there was a 10 milligram pill, 20 milligram, 40 milligram pill. And when it came to the United States, the FDA said, look, we'll approve it, but we're not going to allow you to include the salt in the weight of the tablet. So suddenly the 10 milligram pill became an 8.9 milligram pill. The 20 milligram pill became a 17.8 milligram pill. So generally speaking, the maximum dose is 10, 20, 40 outside of the United States. In the United States, the maximum dose is 35.6 which is two of the 17.8 milligram pills. So the other nice thing about this medication is that it works well with other drugs. So if you're already taking a wakefulness promoting agent that works through dopamine or an oxibate that we've talked about, you can take this medication in addition to it as most narcolepsy patients in order to normalize their sleepiness or you know completely rid themselves of cataplexy are probably gonna need, need more than one agent. And this drug works very well to do that. So 
I think that's it. It's a great medication. I'm glad you 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 made us sort of point that out. Good indication for cataplexy, great for excessive sleepiness. Be careful, Callie, though, if you're taking oral birth control pills, that medication can make certain forms of oral birth control pills slightly, make the, the, it can make your oral birth control slightly less effective for birth control. So just kind of be aware of that. Whew. Well, thank you very much, Callie. We'll we'll move on to the title of our podcast, Lay Me Down in Sheets of Linen. I bet a lot of you recognize that line from Elton John's Tiny Dancer. Tiny Dancer is probably one of Elton John's most famous songs. If you mention Elton John, that might be the song that an individual would would sort of put on. You know, yeah, isn't he the guy who did Tiny Dancer? Um, it came off of his fourth studio album, Madman Across the Water. That's, that album also had Leave On. That was the first single off the album. Tiny Dancer was the second. And a lot of people think that, you know, Elton John wrote that about somebody. And again, if you're familiar with Elton John, Elton John really didn't write the songs. He wrote all the music. It was Bernie Taupin that that did all the writing. And, and Bernie wrote that about his first wife, uh, a woman named Maxine Feebleman, um, who was actually, for a period of time when they were get, getting started, the individual who kind of helped create a lot of Elton John suits, and, and that's the seamstress for the band line. Um, and so uh, it, it's unfortunate. I was really disappointed in the movie Rocket Man that they didn't sort of feature her because she was the inspiration for that song. They kind of showed Bernie and Elton out in LA and Bernie meeting this woman at a club and taking her to a party, but they really didn't sort of do the the Maxine character. What's also interesting about the song is that because it was over six minutes and because of the line, Jesus freaks out in the street, it really didn't get a lot of airplay. Radios thought it was, it was too long. They didn't want to offend people with the Jesus freaks. So it's interesting that the song was not really that popular when it came out. I mean, it was like Billboard Hot 100. It reached, it peaked at 41. So everybody has this idea that Tiny Dancer, it was a massive hit for him. It really wasn't. In fact, it was probably the featuring of the song in the movie Almost Famous, which is such a great scene when the band's on the bus. And I just love it. I get chills every time I think about it. They just kind of spontaneously start singing Tiny Dancer. It was things like that, other media that really made Tiny Dancer a much bigger hit. And everybody on the show knows I'm in love with David Bowie. And what was really interesting is Madman Across the Water, the title track, Madman Across the Water, which I think is the the fourth, I think it was the fourth song on the album. The original version of Madman Across the Water was recorded in 1970, 1971. And Mick Ronson, who was David Bowie's guitarist for Latin Sane, Ziggy Stardust, Hunky Dory, was the guitarist. But when they they scrapped it. They were going to put that song on the previous Elton John album, Tumbleweed Junction. Is that the name of it? Tumbleweed, Tumbleweed Connection was his third album. And that Mad Man Across the Water, Mick Ronson was going to be on it. They scrapped it. And then when they recorded it for Mad Man Across the Water, which they named the album after, uh, they re-recorded it with a different, I think it was John Stone was the, the guitarist, who's kind of Elton John's sort of go-to guitarist. Um, so anyway, Elton John was a very prolific musician in 1971 i think he released three albums all in that time period so there's a lot going on there so anyway everything relates to bowie right so let's get into it sheets bedding pillowcases what fabrics do we use and i was really hoping to find some pretty interesting research on this topic and diving into it the first study that i found or the i should say the oldest study i found was from 1966 which was a quantitative study on fabrics as dissemination of viruses. So they were basically looking at polio and what fabrics would allow polio to exist on them the longest. So back in 1966, you know, they're kind of looking at ways to modify the spread of diseases, much the way we do now. And in this study, they found that cotton tended to prevent polio from existing longer as long as it did on wool. So if you had wool bedding, the polio virus, when you know, applied to the wool bedding, it could live there longer 
than it could on cotton, which I thought was really fascinating. And if you fast forward to 2011 in this sort of disease modifying uh, category, there was a study in the International Journal of Occupational Environmental Medicine. This was from 2011. Does bedding affect the airway and allergies? And I thought, well, this will be easy. I'm sure it's like the natural fabrics and the feathers and the in the and, and the pillow and whatnot are probably the allergens and the other because I always heard that. Like whenever you took your kid to the doctor, they would always say, Do you use a feather pillow because of the allergy, I guess, to the the down? And what was really interesting in this study was it said various cross-sectional and longitudinal studies have suggested that synthetic bedding is associated with asthma, allergic rhinitis, and eczema, while feather bedding seems to be protective. So they were kind of looking at this idea that it was actually the synthetic bedding that might play more of a role when it comes to some of these sort of allergic and asthma, reactive airway disease states, more so in the more natural fibers or even feather bedding, which I thought was really interesting. So those are the two studies that I could find looking at disease state modification. Now, when it comes to things like acne and, and skin care, I've heard a lot of things that, you know, silk might be a better bedding option than other, um, than other bedding because it, it's ability to wick away uh, oil from your from your skin from the skin you know kind of wick it away so you're not kind of sleeping on your own oil and creating problems there was actually i, I worked uh, at, at a relationship i didn't work for but i had a relationship with a company a long time ago that was that had an fda or some sort of approval for hospital bedding and they had come up with this unique fiber that helped prevent infections and bed sores and the fiber was, was, was synthetic. It was really cool to the touch. And they um, transitioned it into the public domain as sort of a performance bedding because it was really cool to the touch. They actually made this little interesting sleeping bag almost out of a sheet. So instead of a you know, thick sleeping bag, it was almost a sleeping bag made out of a sheet. And um, you would you know take it to your hotel room put it in the bed and climb inside and the synthetic material a was really cool b you know it was good for your skin and c it was not an environment that bed by bed bugs or other sort of you know critters inside the bed would like to live in so you know they were kind of marketing it that way i really it was called deep sport that they had a name before that and then they transitioned the name to deep sport i don't think they exist anymore so this idea of trying to look at different fabrics and can we find sleep or even medical uses for them is, is certainly not new. Temperature regulation, I actually thought there would be a wealth of information about that. And the only study that I could really find that looked somewhat reputable was a 2016 study from the National Science of Sleep. It was called The Effects of Fabric for Sleepwear and bedding on sleep at ambient temperatures of 17 degrees Celsius and 22 degrees Celsius. So there were some differences in sleepwear, and we're definitely going to do a podcast episode on what we wear when we sleep at night. But when they actually looked at the fabric that you slept on, they were comparing wool and polyester and didn't find in this study, which I don't think was particularly powered to show a difference, any difference between the individuals who slept on wool and those who slept on polyester. So looking at this type of thing, there really didn't seem to be a, 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 even a suggestion that the two were different. So what are we left with? We're really left with a lot of fiber options. And we'll talk about a bunch of them tonight or today that we can look at in terms of what we put on our bed and really what we're trying to get out of it. And when recently I've done some, some, you know, I've, I've consulted a lot with a company called bed gear. Bed gear is a company you can look up. They make mattresses, they make pillows. They have this great pillow fitting system. And I told them a long time ago, you know, I'm kind of interested in doing a podcast on different bedding materials and they make a bunch of them. And they were like, great. Tell me about the beds in your place. And we're going to send you bedding that you can try out. So I've had, their bedding products since the end of August. And so I've been slowly kind of rotating them through different beds. 
and trying them out in different situations when it's cooler outside, when it's warmer outside. And I'm going to talk about them, but also some others as well. And and the the, the ones that I have, I've got a sort of a cotton, uh, they call it hyper cotton. So I've got a cotton uh, that they use, a linen they call, they, they have, which is a hyper linen. And then they also make a dry tech or a polyester. There's also a vertex that they make, which is out of nylon, which is really strongly moisture wicking. So if you're a sweater, I would urge you to give the vertex a try. Nylon has a very strong moisture wicking property. And there's not a lot of nylon sheets that I'm aware of. You know, there's a whole bunch of high-end linen and cotton. Um, Bowl and Branch makes some really nice one. Uh, Tufton, what is it? Tufton Needle or something? Needle and Tuft. Tufton Needle makes really, really high-end cotton sheets. So when you're looking at bed gear, bed gear is looking more at sort of a performance bedding, really trying to make something breathable and cool, moisture wicking, um, temperature regulating. So their hyper cotton, um, which I've got here in my hand, is actually 40% cotton and then 60% rayon. And the rayon is actually from bamboo, I believe. And then their hyper linen is actually the same thing. It's 93% rayon and 7% linen. Um, and then their dry tech is 100% polyester. And just feeling these, when you feel the cotton, it definitely feels like cotton, like a nice cotton shirt, but it definitely has sort of a little bit of a cooler touch to, than typical cotton and a little bit of a smoother, silkier feel, which is definitely coming from that rayon. Um, and that, that sort of that bamboo rayon a lot of times really makes for an extremely soft, silky kind of feel. It's the same thing with the linen. Um, this definitely has sort of a rougher feel to it. When you actually look at the material, it's got that kind of lining in it. Um, there's little lines that you see in like a linen, like a white linen shirt. Um, but once again, it's still got that kind of cooling property to it, but definitely feels a lot more like linen. I was shocked, you know, I was actually sleeping on these and got them and thought, okay, well, this is cotton with something. This is linen with something. I had no idea it was 7% linen and 93% wearing. It, lo it looks much more skewed to the linen. So when you actually put it on your bed, it actually feels like a linen sheet, um, just a little bit cooler and more breathable. The 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 dry tech, which is their polyester sheet, is extremely silky. It feels like the performance shirt that you wear to the gym or, you know, my kids were playing travel baseball. They would get these like practice jerseys and it was always this kind of, you know, performance feel to it. So if you're a, you know, a, go out and do a triathlon or a Spartan race the material feels very much like the performance um, feel. And I remember a long time ago working with a company um, called Sheiks and they were, it was started by two women. Uh, one was a WNBA coach, one was an Olympian and a WNBA player, I believe. And they started Sheiks, which was, I think sort of a polyester sheet product. My guess is they've gone well beyond that, probably have all kinds of stuff now. So you can kind of look them up too. They're an uh, interesting uh, company as well. Um, so when you look at that cotton or linen, um, generally speaking, typical cotton or linen uh, without the performance weaving in like bed gear does, very breathable, um, typically very hypoallergenic. So it's generally not something that people have a lot of trouble with in terms of um, less likely to cause allergies or irritate the skin. It's very durable. Cotton, you know, depending on the thread count and its construction, can last a very long time. Um, it absorbs a lot of moisture. It doesn't tend to wick quite as well without a performance layer to it. Um, and it tends to be sort of naturally antibacterial. Um, when you add that performance rayon element to it, it really creates a much more breathable fabric and a much cooler fabric too. I mean, when you sort of put your hand on these fabrics, you would expect that that performance polyester would be the coolest but really it's probably the cotton that's the coolest when you when you touch it. And then the linen is probably a close second, which is probably why they skewed a little bit more towards the rayon, a little bit less towards the linen. And again, linen is typically derived from flax. And that's where it's coming from versus cotton is obviously coming from cotton. Another 
fabric that we didn't touch upon because I don't have any in my possession right now is silk. And a lot of people like silk because it's really comfortable. It has the luxurious feel. I mean, silk sheets is, is, isn't that the, the, the pinnacle of, of, you know, when you, when you win the lottery, you buy the big mansion with silk sheets and all the bedrooms, right? It's a very, very smooth texture. It's actually quite strong, very hypoallergenic. And there's some research that shows that silk has skin benefits, very gentle on the skin in terms of not only friction, but also really has the ability to sometimes, you know, to, to wick away um, uh, oil from the skin. So if you're somebody with acne, sometimes silk, silk bed, uh, silk pillowcase or silk sheets can be uh, very positive. Um, one fabric that I also wanted to touch upon and uh, bed gear doesn't make one, but I've I've got one from Quince. Um, I was not given these Quince sheets. Again, just being completely transparent, bed gear sent me all of those. Uh, Quince did not, but I wanted to buy a good bamboo and to talk to some people. And they said, oh, you know, Quince makes a really nice set. Bamboo is a really, really interesting fabric. It's very light. Um, for people who are interested in the environment, it's actually really sustainable. It doesn't, it, ba ba bamboo grows very quickly, does not require a lot of water. So the ability to grow bamboo, get the fibers from it and create bamboo clothing or bamboo sheets makes it a very environmentally friendly um, product. And it's interesting on the quince tag, it says, this is a pretty delicate fabric. Um, so, you know, to get the most out of your sheets, you should wash them in a bag. Um, generally, I think I think of as bamboo is pretty durable and 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 long long lasting. However, I'm sure the construction and and whatnot could make a difference there. I do not wash my bamboo sheets in a fabric bag, and I've had them for a long time, and they look great. And they only get softer and softer uh, when you use them. So. One downside to the bamboo might be that maybe I'm, this is an exceptional situation. They may require a little bit more care, but I remember sleeping on the bamboo for the first time and thinking, wow, these are really cool to the touch. Like I got into the bed and the, and the, the sheets felt really soft, um, almost slick. And I, I just really, really liked it a lot. Um, another bedding fabric that you might come across is the fabric tinsel, uh, sometimes called lyocell, L-Y-O-C-E-L-L. -L -L. And these are typically derived from fibers from the eucalyptus tree. Uh, tinsel, very soft and comfortable. I, I had a pair of tinsel sheets from bed gear uh, many years ago that things would just slide off the bed. <laughs> it was just it, the, the tinsel on tinsel. So when you had the bottom sheet tinsel and then the top sheet tinsel and you sat on the top sheet it was almost like there was no friction between those two layers so if you sat on the edge of the bed it was very easy just to slide right off it was it was a really unusual feeling to feel that kind of um movement um but very hypoallergenic and it's also again very environmentally sustainable just because it's very easy to um, to create the tinsel fiber. Um, so tinsel is a, is another great fabric to be on the lookout for and, and tends to be extremely durable. So what are we looking for in terms of pros and cons here? So we'll just kind of run our list and, and talk about these very quickly. Cotton, very easy to find, generally pretty inexpensive. It's breathable. It's absorbent of, of, of moisture doesn't tend to wick quite as well, but will absorb the moisture and get it away from your skin. Some of the cons of, of, of cotton sheets tend to be the durability can vary depending on thread count and construction. And higher thread count doesn't necessarily mean better. And when you start really getting into the uh, Pima cottons and Egyptian cottons, if you've ever worn like a Pima shirt, I've got a lot of, you know, kind of nicer shirts that are a Pima cotton, they can be kind of expensive and, um, but, but pretty luxe. Egyptian cotton is kind of the same way. Uh, when you look at linen, very breathable, uh, moisture wicking, it's naturally pretty hypoallergenic, generally a bit more expensive. When you look at the bed gear price point for their performance linen, 
I think they're their most expensive line and, and you kind of feel it. I mean, it's just, it's a really luxe looking fabric and really cool when you hold it. I, I'm not a big fan of flannels and linens, you know, straight linen kinds of things. Cause they tend to be a little bit more heat, um, capturing, um, and, and again, when the linen is first purchased, it can be pretty coarse. The more you wash it, the better linen gets. And, you know, these came pretty soft, but as I continue to wash the both cotton and linen bed gear sheets are getting softer and softer for sure. Flannel, I think is an abomination. So we didn't really talk much about wool. Wool is uh, got some really interesting moisture and heat related properties. Um, I just, like a cool bed and you know this was kind of a sticky point with our with my marriage that you know at some point in Virginia the weather gets cold enough where it was like okay can we take the summer sheets off and kind of transition our bed to winter we winterize the bed you know um, and I mean winterize in terms of the season not my last name so winterizing the bed is putting the flannel sheets on and I hated it. In fact, I would not allow the flannel pillowcase. And I thought, man, if somebody could figure out a bed situation where one half is flannel and the other half is anything, I would buy that. Um, and then it would be great because you could just turn it around depending on who wants the flannel on what side. So th there's a there's an option. We need the dual uh, dual kind of sheets now where it's not just one fabric, it's right down the middle. Maybe there's a little, little buttons down the middle where you can, you can customize it. You want flannel, you want flannel bamboo, or you want cotton linen. You can have it any way you want it. Um, but anyway, uh, flannel, not great for, you know, hotter environments and uh, it kind of pills, you know, when you kind of rub on flannel for a while, it gets those little, so it doesn't really stand up against a lot of, uh, friction over a period of time so i'm not a huge fan of flannel but obviously we need to kind of put that in there. And usually flannel is a wool product if i didn't mention that altogether. polyester very inexpensive for the most part although when you start looking at polyester performance types of things the price can go up very wrinkle resistant so you can just take it right out of the dryer put it on your bed and it looks amazing versus some of the pure linens or pure flannels that wool can be really, really wrinkled. So if you like that crisp looking bed, that might be a problem for you. Uh, polyester, depending on its construction, the breathability, uh, the venting of heat can be a bit of a problem. So if you're a hot sleeper, depending on the polyester, it might be a problem. And again, I didn't find that to be a problem with the 100% polyester sheets that Bedgear makes. I found them to be quite cool. Maybe not quite as cool as the performance cotton and linen, but it was cool nonetheless. Um, and maybe not quite as moisture wicking as the rayon fabric that they do. Bamboo, really cool, but tends to be a bit more expensive and might be a little bit, um, uh, a bit less durable over time, depending on the kind that you get, but wonderful feel to it. Um, and easy to maintain and 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 uh, in that way. Uh, silk, uh, very smooth, very luxe, can be really expensive though. Great for people with more sensitive skin, prone to acne and or prone to sort of, you know, if you, something where you don't want a lot of friction or rubbing. So if you're somebody who moves a lot during the night, that silk might feel really good. Uh, microfiber is typically microfiber is considered to be some sort of um, synthetic fiber that's very small. And there's a certain measurement that the fiber is below that size. It's considered a microfiber. Um, I, I don't really have a lot of research about that. They tend to be a little bit softer and warmer than typical cottons. Um, so they, but they, they're going to lack that kind of cooling property. So if you think about the fibers of cotton coming together, and making those fibers even smaller and the weave, all those little pockets where air can kind of move through and now getting closed up because you've got a tinier little weave of the fabric that's creating that situation. They're not natural fibers um, typically either. And then tensile is durable, um, very, very smooth. Again, that's that kind of friction sort of feeling when you have the tensile pillowcase on the tensile sheet that it's sliding all over the place. Um, Tends to sleep really cool, um, but does tend to be a bit more costly. Tinsel is a pretty expensive fabric to, to create. 
Um, and again, not something you'd want in a cooler climate. So, so, and, and, and in fact, I, we were just, we're going to do an episode on weighted blankets that I was just talking about the, one of the companies, Barbie that we were talking with makes a kind of a, a velour weighted blanket, uh, a more cotton standard one, and then a tinsel one. And a lot of people talk about, you know, Hey, my weighted, I love the weighted blanket, but I'm worried about, you know, um, temperature. And so that tinsel can kind of create something in a blanket or a duvet cover that makes it a little bit cooler because of the fabric. So that's it. That is the episode on bedding types. I'm really curious to find out what you all sleep on. I think tonight we're going to be on the performance cotton from bed gear. Uh, but we tend to alternate that between that and bamboo when it's really hot. Um, and so that's what we're sleeping on now. So really curious to hear what you think about this, what your favorites and least favorite fabrics are. So hit us up on DR Chris Winter Instagram, DR Chris Winter Twitter. Let us know. Congratulations to the Chiefs. That was a fantastic end to the NFL season. And until we talk again next week, sleep well.